What's popping everybody? So today we got a long one. It's not going to be about one specific thing, but if I had to summarize it, we're going to say it's about making backgrounds for your line art, uh, whether it be for a character, creature, or object of object. I'm sorry. Uh, if you stick around to the end, I promise it's going to make you at least a little bit slightly better at art. I promise that. Um, so starting off, we have the aforementioned line art. Um, I had this idea for a bit of a hellmouth. I'm really inspired by old demonic paintings and stuff like that. I've always wanted to be able to do one myself, and uh, hellmouth is uh, basically like a living entrance into hell. So that's basically what I'm going for here. So for my hellmouth, I wanted it to be a clown with hands attached to its head, stretching its uh, mouth open that has a arm and a hand for a tongue. And I used reference for the hands and the face. I won't be showing that reference because it's a little bit of a goofy picture, but making it as loose as possible in the beginning, because this clown is like based off of a self-portrait that I originally drew from, from memory, but also because I wanted to get the shape down and get it as readable as possible. It's really important to have line art that's, um, that's silhouette and shape is really identifiable from far away or zoomed out especially if you plan on posting it online like um imagine if a follower is scrolling down your page and they want to be able to at least like roughly tell what's going on in your piece before even clicking on it but also it's like more importantly it's for good composition in a piece that has a background um so putting in a horizon line on a separate layer and manipulating it until it's where i like it really helps me and speeds things up for laying out the landscape when I'm putting the line art over a background and sometimes I even do a rough sketch of the landscape just to know where I want to put everything. I do it um, a little bit in this painting. I usually work my painting's background to foreground, starting with the sky and then to the ground and then the space in between the background and the foreground and then I work on the actual foreground and then finally I finish with details and then color correcting and borders and stuff like that. Um, but this is all to, all to create lots of depth in your piece, I actually end up getting rid of this background. I wasn't working well with the composition uh, of the piece, and I kind of rushed it, but that's okay. You know, I just I try to like get to like learn to love my mistakes because they're just like another step in your learning curve. And like making mistakes allows me to learn the best because I get a chance to start over with the knowledge that I didn't have before. You know, when I began. So um, with the new sky in mind, I brush across and on the horizon I'm going to change the color uh, of the white. I'm going to change that a little bit later. But then I go in and do some simple stylized clouds and by doing my quick cloud method and um, speaking of which if you see my other TikTok I had made about making quick clouds I'd like to make like a little addendum to what I had said about not losing the top edge of your cloud because it would make it look, not look like a cloud. Uh, I was wrong. I don't you know, I don't judge the sky and nature is never wrong. And one of my favorite things about painting landscapes is uh, how things in nature connect in some aspects that are like in a way um, that painting a cloud can be done the same way that you would paint a snow covered mountain or how quickly a lake can turn into a grassy plain. Um, so with uh, a cloud with a top edge brushed out, it can still be a far away cloud and sometimes clouds aren't like our idea of perfect and painting clouds is more about intention and the story of what's happening in your, in your scene and like where the winds have whipped it around. I went for distant clouds overall cause I wanted more of a panoramic view of the landscape, but I also want to give like a windswept feeling. I want to feel like you can get blown over at any moment. Um, so, for the land, it's pretty simple to paint, especially because the vibe I was going for is like a barren landscape that's also a bit, a bit distant. So I start with the base color at about 75% opacity and uh, to get easy layers of depth as I paint it in. Uh, not completely random in the planes that I draw, but very loose because I'm just blocking in shapes right now and trying to get the depths down correctly. And uh, so the space closest to the eye, the foreground, should have the deepest saturation and shadows. And you can do this as much or as little as you'd like by stacking the shades of color that you use, which I'm doing with this rock pillar on the left. And it's like a, this is like a bumper. It stops the eye from running off the painting. And notice that I'm making a, 
the shadows deeper and deeper further left that I go in the painting and to give more depth. So I also go for uh, more pillars in the distance, and these are to establish the scale and size of everything in the scene. Um, that and the part coming up are key to this video, though. It's about placing your line art in the background, which is done with uh, shadows and highlights. So first I lay down a base color underneath uh, my line art, and off rip it's a lot easier to imagine where the shadows will start to fall at. I start uh, working in the shadows that live underneath the line art, and that's the main thing where you're going to see me like fuss over. Also, if you notice, I'm trying to hold back on details because if I overdevelop parts of the uh, piece, it makes it harder to fix problems that I see in the end. Like, imagine you're looking at like a bunch of cords or like wires and the straight lines of wire. They're going to be easier to arrange, but like when you when they cross over each other at a point, they get tangled and a lot harder to manage. So that's kind of like the details are the wires crossing over each other. It's a lot harder to undo things that you've messed up. Um, so I get into laying in the flat color for the line art, and sometimes I put down some hard shadows just to make sure I don't get lost in the paint and I can give myself like some details. I'm using the line art like a lot less as reference, but uh, once you have your flat colors, we start with the shadows. I always advise going for the most obvious shadows to you and then match the direction of the shadows that are a little less obvious, but also do not hesitate to use references. I use an app called Magic Poser app, and it lets you create 3D models of scenes and put 3D models of people and sometimes objects and animals in there. And you can manipulate the light, so you can use this app to match the light from your painting and you have an automatic reference for lighting, especially with faces, it really helps a lot. So I'm gonna go in and add some more details in the, in the ground. Again, notice that I'm working all around the painting in sections because it helps me not overdevelop one spot. Um, going in and adding some more color to the sky, I love to add some like drama, some more blues in there. I'm starting to really love these like bruised skies kind of thing that I'm going for. Here I go over some old shadows to reinforce them after I blend them to make the shapes clearer. I'm basically carving it out. Imagine I'm carving it out of stone. Uh, also adding shadows to just give like a smooth skin texture to this creature. It's like an ancient creature and like nothing can even scratch it. Like so. Going and reinforcing the eyes because I want them to be the clearest part of the painting. I want them to be like very piercing. Uh, lots more blending. You know, we're getting into like the meat of it. One of my favorite things about these kinds of paintings is like the chaos that, that usually is going on. I wanted a bit of that with these little stick figures running around. And now we're getting into the fun part of it, which is the details for me. I was um, considering making my bumper rock a little bit more detailed. And I actually really liked how it looked and how it turned out, but I think it's going to have to be dialed back because I don't want to take the focus from the middle, from the hell mouth, uh, too much. Um, lots of messing around and seeing what works compositionally, but also, like, thematically. I've always liked the idea of, like, presumed giant, like, chunks of the ground being lifted into the air and floating there, and it seems like it fit this, like, purgatory-type plane, but, I'm, you know, unfortunately, I don't think it's, like, right for this exact piece. Um... So we get some more fiery pits in there. I gotta add some more in there. Notice how I'm adding some more glow onto the clown legs and hands. This is like, this is the highlight part that lays your line art into the painting. Um, so I, here I wasn't in love with the overall composition. So I wanted to add some birds, but like in a dense, almost like giant sheet of like a wave in the wind. When I got the idea to draw the, uh, that's when I got the idea to draw some silhouettes of like angels or like demons. I hope it, like, translates, so I was trying to make it look like uh, the flock starts from far away, and as it gets closer, you think it's birds, but really these giant beings, like, carrying weapons, and they are kind of, like, flying around the clown, and these are for, like, composition, but also just, like, notice, like, the silhouettes are, they're just silhouettes, you know, to not take up too much focus from the the focal point of the painting. Um, but they're also to give scale and, like, size contrast in relation to the souls being stomped on and, like, swallowed like on the ground, um, like I wanted these to still be giants. Um, doing a bit of cleaning up, some color correction, a frame, and there you have it, y'all. You know, this is one of my favorite pieces yet. Longest video I've ever made and like the most I've ever applied into one painting. I hope you're still here, and if you are, thank you so much. I hope that this helps at all, like, see you in this video. Uh, thank you. Bye.